Hello everyone, for first updates now, I'm Tyler Olds, and you're watching Behind the Bot. It's a fun show we dive deeper into FTC robots and what makes them work. And today I'm here with team number 9527, Rogue Resistance, coming out of Texas. 9527 is off to a great start with a high score of 218, their last league meeting in December. Their intake is extremely efficient, and while they are a wide robot, they traverse the barrier with ease and have a great aesthetic look as well. Joining me from 9527, I have Seb, Eduardo, and Sherwin. And we're going to be talking about, of course, that full uh, journey of the robot, uh, but really talking about what goes into the hardware of this, uh, the software, some really cool lift automation, discussing Roadrunner a little bit. All this and more coming up here on Behind the Bot. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We'd like to thank Stryker for their continued support of First Updates Now. Stryker's internship portal is now open and available. Discover internships and rotational programs located around the world, including their headquarters in Michigan, when you go to careers.stryker.com and click on Students and Graduates. Get ready for esports for those in first with the Fun Gaming League. FGL will have tournament events and be setting up clan play soon. FGL is open to all students, mentors, alumni, and volunteers in FIRST ages 13 and older. Join the fun Discord at discord.gg forward slash FIRST updates now for tournament and event info. Well, Seb, let's dive deep into this robot and talk about uh, what's gone into it. I know you're going to be discussing a little bit more about the hardware. Uh, so we'll start out with the intake of the robot, talking about some of the concept and design and what's gone into it, maybe some iterations to come. So back when we first learned earlier in, on in the season, that um they would be that we would be doing the um the cubes and the wiffle balls again for intake. We started out um a bit of prototyping back in like May. So originally we we're trying to use some really like um stiff plastics tubing, which worked well, but it was also extremely violent. So later on in the season, whenever we did get the game and it was revealed that we were having heavy cubes, we were wondering how we could try and modify older intakes um to work for this game. So we decided to look at a lot of old rescue intakes and stuff. And um, we actually um, looked really, really like Vulcan robotics intake from Rescue. So we actually took a very, took a very similar design with, very, with a more vertical intake style that also um, uses thicker surgical tubing in order to pick up all of the weighted cubes and stuff. So intake on. It was a miter gear on a 3.7 to 1 motor to drive our first intake roller which um, has really, really thick surgical tubing on a PVC pipe with two axles on each side, which belts up to a second roller, which finishes the journey of the element into our deposit. We really knew that we wanted to have a horizontal extension early on in the season, which has really helped us out in our matches a lot. But in order to do that, we have to have a really compact intake that can give us as much space as possible for, for a horizontal extension, which led us to this design. Um, the second roller is just as a precaution to make sure that things don't um, just gets stuck in there and bounce up and down um, instead of just uh, so then I'll actually go in which occasionally we do have problems with ducks and cubes sometimes they'll start bouncing in there but with the balls and stuff because the noodles are there it actually can go pretty much instantly into that which actually has really helped with our cycle time and matches yeah and we've definitely seen uh, you know between your two meets that you've had so far definitely great improvement uh, between those uh, as, as your scores are definitely much higher uh, going in okay what's next on your robot take us through a little bit more so next, we have a virtual four-bar deposit um, and uh, connected to a um, linear side lift. So whenever we want to go to deposit, press up, we just extend the lift vertically and the horizontal extension will extend. And then whenever we're lined up, we can just press one of the buttons on the controller and it'll spit out the ball or a cube or whatever it is. Can we see that action then, take place one more time, by the way? I, I really love uh, seeing how it kind of transfers from one side of your robot to the other. Go down. So, up. So, so talk to me a little bit more about uh, that concept inside, you know, for it. You know, we've seen a few different options from teams so far, but I really love how it's just doing that little wrist flip almost between the two. Have you done something like that before, or where did, where did some of the concept and uh, uh, design come for that? So we really love, so the virtual four bar was originally an idea we stole from old Skystone bots, since we really liked how they had this, that, that quick horizontal extension. And we've never really done anything similar before. Uh, most of our years we've built claw bots, and this is really the first year that we've had the time and effort to actually put into more complicated mechanisms. So this year we decided to go a bit more complicated with the claw with the um, virtual four bar deposit. So looking at the, the journey of uh, either a cube or a ball so far, how about future iterations? What are you looking at improving or getting better in your next meets to come? So in the future we really want to improve our intake. Right now we have um, right now, I can intake things. They can get 
to the first part of the way really efficiently. But sometimes cubes will get stuck and we're driving over and we have to wait for it to, de um, to transfer over into the deposit. And occasionally we have some issues at the virtual four bar. Um, servos not being perfectly synced, so we really need to solve those to get it working. Like you guys can see in one of our matches at Meet 2, um, the virtual four bar wires were actually starting to fail because they weren't properly connected inside of our cable chain. So that actually, you could just see the um, virtual four bar struggling in one of that one of those matches. So before we move on to different uh, parts here, Robot, I do want to bring in uh, Sherwin and talk a little bit more uh, about the uh, lift automation and what's going on for that. And, and talk to me about some of the programming you've done for it to, to really make that all come together. So in terms of the lift, um, we have, um, so if you haven't noticed um, with the, the wrist um, at motion, we made sure that we, we combined the horizontal movement along with the vertical movement of the four bar so that, um, so that it's a lot easier for Eduardo, our driver, to um, go back and forth when he's cycling, back, um, cycling in the actual competition. Along with in autonomous, we also have um, work with uh, having a lift PID to make sure that our lift actually goes in the right um, position. Um, it's particularly, it goes first in the right horizontal position, and then it goes forward in the, um, in the horizontal position because in order to make sure that the shipping hubs are not you know, being collided with. And uh, as we can move on, talking a little bit more about uh, from a programming perspective, talk to me a little about what you're doing for uh, Autonomous. Obviously, you went with a wider robot, right? So, uh, And we're not really seeing teams use odometry anyways, even even with uh, thinner, skinnier robots. So what are you looking at doing from a drive perspective, and what else do you do in Autonomous as well? So in Autonomous, we really worked to make sure that um, we implemented Roadrunner. We found that Roadrunner was actually a really effective way to get proper positioning on the uh, propositioning and pathing because in uh, meet one we actually didn't implement roadrunner and we had um, some issues with hitting the uh, the the, um, the flywheel with the uh, the carousel and so we had to use roadrunner to create perfect pathing so that with encoders we can calculate these um, approximate positions so that um, all the pathing was all sufficient uh, I want to bring in, as we start to wrap up a little bit, bring in Eduardo and talk about from uh, what you're seeing on the field, Eduardo. Um, in Texas here, how are we seeing uh, competition and play happen? Are you seeing a lot of defense? Are teams mostly playing offense? Or what has surprised you in a couple league meets you've had so far? So what surprised me a little bit is how, uh, how little teams are using a wider robot. So that's actually working really well for our team because we managed to get the bigger bot and go do the, the actual delivering of the relics. Uh, while the other team usually just does the duck spinner and cycles into the um, shared hub. But I guess, um, I don't know, something that we are doing a little different is just the way we're doing our lift mechanism. I've seen a lot of teams do something that's like vertical but angled. Yeah. Uh, not many teams are just going straight up and then horizontal like we have ours. So that was a little different. How about from uh, traversing the field with your uh, dry base that you have? Obviously, you got that little bit of clearance uh, in the middle of your robot there. It looks like your robot has had, I mean, it's just going over the barrier with ease. We've seen a lot of the robots get hung up and stuck. What do you think the difference is uh, that your robot brings where it's able to uh, traverse it so easily? Okay, so on day one of kickoff, whenever we found out there would be a terrain, we were um, really worried we'd have to do something complex like a rock or boggy for like the first meets and just try and get over more easily. And then we just tore, but then as a test and kind of as a joke, we just tore the dead wheels off of our, um, we tore the dead wheels off of our summer drivetrain and just decided to drive over some PVC pipe that we had lying around and it worked surprisingly. We didn't like how well, how well it worked in the case we get beached. So after that night, we went home and redesigned our drivetrain to have ground clearance and made sure that everything that goes near the ground fits complete within the profile of the wheels. That means that whenever we actually do drive over the terrain, the, first, the only thing that ever contacts is the wheels. So that allows us to just get over. And as long as we just get over in a straight line, we'll be fine. If we go over an angle, that's when things get a little more interesting. But if we go in a straight line, we're just completely fine. So there's some of the driver practice. Uh, I want to wrap up on your robot talking about something I saw at Texas Cup uh, last year, and that's the sticker on the front of your robot that says Ohio isn't real. So is this is this continuing on into this year as well, too? Are we going to see this on many robots? You know, I don't know. I got this robot. I got this sticker in the mail from a friend from the <laughs> FTT Discord. And I have an well, extra where else one. Would you? For, yeah. <laughs> we have, I have an extra one for our rebuild. So I guess we'll, we'll continue seeing it at least with us. Not sure about other teams, though. Uh, is there anything from a, a rebuild perspective you want to mention and maybe what you're looking at doing in the future? Well, for one, we'll actually be painting the drivetrain plates so they won't be wood colored anymore. And um, we're also going to be—we're also working on a few new things to try and improve our terrain crossing ability. 
such as um, right now we're working on a suspension drivetrain, which hopefully should help out with that. Perfect. Well, 9527 uh, Rogue Resistance, once again, coming from Texas. Thank you so much for taking the time to tell us about your team and your robot. Uh, great success so far. Can't wait to see what else your team brings. And, of course, competing well in Texas. Thanks a lot for taking the time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. We'd like to thank Stryker for their continued support of First Updates Now. Stryker's internship portal is now open and available. Discover internships and rotational programs located around the world, including their headquarters in Michigan, when you go to careers.stryker.com and click on Students and Graduates. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.